represents a transgene, which is only present in some lanes. The lanes with both normal gene and transgene represent transgenic mice. The lanes with only the normal gene represent mice where the transgene did not successfully incorporate into the genome. Mice that have the transgene are bred with wild type mice. The offspring are again tested for the presence of the transgene. It is important to check that the transgene can be stably transmitted to the next generation in order to establish a line of mice that carries a new gene. The direct injection technique is limited because the transgene inserts in a random location, often with multiple copies, producing results that can be complicated to interpret. To create mice with specific genotypes, a method was developed that replaces a normal gene with a mutant transgene. This method exploits a phenomenon called homologous recombination, where two homologous sequences of DNA can recombine, much like in a meiotic crossing over. A mutant transgene is created with flanking sequences that are identical to the DNA surrounding the normal target gene and the transgene replaces the normal gene. If the mutant gene is disabled, the resulting transgenic mouse is called a knockout mouse. A modification of this technique is a knock-in mouse. Here, the transgene is inserted to a location in the genome, which, if disrupted, does not have deleterious effects. Advantage of a knock-in mouse over a transgenic mouse created by the direct injection method is that only one copy of the transgene inserts to a controlled location. The disadvantage of a knock-in or knock-out mouse is that homologous recombination does not occur very often in mammals. In these methods, a pair of mice with brown fur are mated Embryos are isolated from the mother after three days. At this stage of the development, the embryo is called a blastocyst. Blastocysts can be cultured to make colonies of embryonic stem cells, or ES cells. ES cells have the potential to develop into any cell type or tissue. Transgene DNA is then inserted to the ES cells. One technique used is electroporation, which uses a brief electrical pulse to move the DNA to inside the nucleus. The transgene contains a marker which is used to select only those ES cells that have integrated the transgene DNA. The selected ES cells are then cultured to form their own colonies. PCR and southern blots are then used to test the colonies to find the cells in which a homologous recombination has occurred. These cells are then maintained in the culture and used in subsequent steps. For the next step, blastocysts are collected from the mouse, this time an albino. ES cells are then injected into the blastocysts under the microscope and the blastocysts are implanted into a foster mother and allowed to develop. The offspring that results is a chimera. A chimera is an organism containing tissues with different genotypes. These chimeras have some parts that developed from the albino blastocyst cells and other parts from the injected ES cells, which originally came from the brown mice. Which part of the body comes from which cells is entirely random. To establish a line of mice with a new transgene, it is necessary to find chimeras whose germline cells, that is, sperm or egg cells, have developed from the injected ES cells. This is done by breeding the chimeras with albino mice. 
in some chimeras, the germline cells are not from the ES cells, and the offspring will be albino. In others, the germline cells are from the ES cells, and the offspring will be brown. These mice can be used to found the colony. From the initial designing steps of the transgene DNA, it can take one to two years to develop a line of mice by this method. The transgenic mouse technology involves a whole suite of molecular biology techniques and a well-organized mouse facility with dedicated staff. It is one of the most powerful tools available to biomedical sciences today.